If you've ever been around my stream, you know that I like to use a green screen. It looks nice when done correctly, and it allows for some fun shenanigans on stream. So it pains me just a little bit to see so many people doing it wrong, in my opinion, or just being flat out lazy. The first thing I see is just the complete lack of an overlay altogether. People just lazily slapping themselves in the corner of their stream using a green screen because they can. There's no personality to the design, it looks identical to thousands of other streams, and you can't easily move yourself out of the way of gameplay elements. The second thing I see a lot of is some sort of variation of the bar overlay. Y you know the one I'm talking about where it looks like you're coming out of the bar, which honestly looks fine, I guess. But what I personally like to do is add just a little bit of a background. It gives the overlay some depth, it makes you pop out a little bit more, and it just looks mwah. So clean. So this week, I have two animated green screen camera overlays for you, that's a mouthful, that are based on the regular camera overlays I released a few weeks ago. They look something like this, and they are completely customizable with your logo, colors, and shape to some extent in Blender 2.8. All you have to do is download the file from the Discord, link in the description, and follow along. And before we get started, if you like the free graphics, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button and ringing the bell. It's completely free, it lets you know when there's new stuff, and it really helps me out. That being said, let's get started. My name is Chris Folia, I'm your stream professor, welcome to Stream School. All right, when you first open the file, it should look very similar to this. And the very first thing you're gonna wanna do, as always, is come up here and click on the shiny circle button. That'll put this viewport into rendered preview mode so you can always see what your overlay looks like as you're working on it. Next, you'll notice we have a few different collections in the upper right hand corner. We have face ref, overlay one, and overlay two. So I included face ref because when I'm working on an overlay, I like to see what the camera looks like in relation to the overlay as I'm working on it. So if you hit that checkbox right there, you get a giant transparent cutout of my face. Beautiful. Uh, and you can actually adjust this if you want to to match what you plan to do with your camera. So if you click on the rectangle and you hit G on your keyboard, you can move it around. Or if you hit S on your keyboard, you can scale it. Now, personally, I think this position and this scale look pretty good for this kind of overlay, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But you do whatever makes you comfortable personally. So let's move on to the controls for overlay one. First of all, you notice we have a bunch of arrows over here to the left. Then over to the right, we have some text. So the text controls the colors of the overlay. For instance, if I click on gradient one and go down to the materials panel, then click on the color box, I can manipulate the first color of the gradient. So for our purposes, I'm gonna leave this at a nice blue. I actually like the default blue. But then for gradient two, you can manipulate the second color of the gradient. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for this one, I kinda like a nice slightly bluish green, I think looks pretty good. And the reason I have this as a diagonal gradient, by the way, is because this overlay is animated. So if you hit space on your keyboard, you can see that the gradient animates and loops uh, from the upper right corner to the lower left corner. And I personally think an animated gradient looks nice at a diagonal rather than up and down. But we'll get to the controls for adjusting that a little bit later. Because we also have the border color, which if you guessed that this changes the border color, uh, that was a pretty good guess. Uh, I'm personally going to leave this one at white, just know that that control exists if you personally want to change it. So now moving on to the arrows, these four arrows, or four arrow pieces right here, change the shape of the overlay, and this quad arrow changes the orientation and position and scale of the gradient. So let's start with the shape. If we grab the big arrow first, and then click on the green arrow and drag it, you notice this changes how tall the overlay is. Then each of these individual smaller points change the actual shape of it. So for instance, if I grab the small arrow right here, without clicking the camera, and drag on that, I can either make it a dome or I can cave it in. 
Or if I wanna get uh, silly or fancy, depending on how you look at it, you can also grab the rotation widget and you can make it a nice wave kind of shape. Or if you wanna make like a mushroom shape or something, you can also grab the scale widget and scale it up or down. And the other two small arrows do functionally the same thing, but for either corner of the overlay. So if you grab this one and you just want it to curve down on one side, for instance, you can do that or have it just curve up on one side and same with the other side. So for me personally, I'm going to curve this up a little bit in the center and then move the entire thing down. Somewhere around there, I think looks pretty good. Then the final control, which is the gradient animation, you can grab this and you can hit R on your keyboard to rotate it or use the rotate widget. Or you can hit G on your keyboard to move it or use the movement widget or S to scale it. And if you move it and scale it, you've got a decent amount of leeway here for it to still animate and loop properly. Um, you can't scale it too far down or else it'll mess it up and it won't loop properly. But for the most part, you do have a decent amount of freedom here and a decent amount of leeway for changing that. So I'm personally gonna leave mine as a gradient because I, or as a diagonal because I think that's what looks best. Just know that the option is there. Then finally, for overlay one, you can also change out your logo. So if you click on your logo here and come over to the materials panel again and click on the folder icon, you can select your logo. I'm gonna use my fish logo. You also have the same controls where you can scale this up or move it. Just know that if you wanna make this big enough to overlap you, you're gonna to wanna to add this as a separate layer in OBS. I would not include your logo in the overlay file if you're gonna make it this big. Uh, but if you want to get rid of the logo, that brings me to the next part of the controls. If you come up to the collections, overlay one has a bunch of well-organized collections. So if you wanna turn the logo off, just uncheck it. Then you can do the same thing for the backdrop by selecting art. Or if you just want the backdrop and no metrics, you can also turn off the metrics. Or if you want nothing, then I don't know why you're watching this tutorial. But yeah, I'm gonna leave both of these on and I'm also gonna leave the logo on and move on to overlay number two, which is sort of like this cool sci-fi TV looking thing. And you'll notice for the most part, the controls look very similar. So we'll start with the text. The LED color changes the color of the dollar, star, and LEDs. So I'm gonna make that green for our demonstration. Ooh, or we could do the Stream School logo. So if I select this and find the Stream School logo, I can scale that up a little bit. And we can make this pink. And then we can make the background color a nice purple. And you'll notice that some of these colors don't let the TV stripes pattern show up very well. To fix that, I, I, I figured out that if you just make it a little bit darker, the stripes pattern will show up significantly better for a lot of the colors. I'm gonna make this kind of like a, like a nice dark purple. And then you can also change the plastic color. I might make this a little bit purple. You can change the metal color, maybe make this a little bit slightly tinted pink. And you can change the text box color, maybe tint that just a little bit pink. And I think that overall looks pretty solid. And you'll notice that this overlay animates as well. If you hit space, it flickers, uh, the, gra the radial gradient here flickers, and then the text and the LEDs fade in and out over the course of five seconds. And uh, you can adjust a lot of this, but we'll get to that with the arrows. So moving on to the control controls, you'll notice that this arrow right here changes the height of the overlay, and it does break if you drag it down too far, and I'll get to that in a second. But just know that you can change how tall this is. I'm gonna move this to about here. Then these two arrows right here change the height of and size of the LED bar. So if I move this or this, 
you have full control over what that looks like. Then, finally, you'll notice that you have a nice rotation widget right here. So if you grab that and bring up the rotation widget and rotate it, you'll notice that that changes the direction of the metal grain for the brushed metal texture. I personally like the default, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And then one more control. I know I said finally on the previous one. We have the quad arrow again, and this moves the gradient. So I'm just gonna hit G on my keyboard, and I can move this around. And even if you move it, it'll still flicker properly. And you can also scale it down if you want to and move it, which I don't know why you would do this. It looks pretty bad, but just know that the option is there for complete creative control of whatever you want to do with it. So if you want like darker corners or brighter corners, you can mess with that. I'm personally pretty happy with how this one looks. So let's say you've created your overlays and you're ready to export. So if you just want a still image, that's super easy to do. Uh, first, you're gonna wanna turn off the face ref because I'm pretty sure you don't want my face on your final overlay image. Uh, but then you can bring up whichever overlay you want. I'm gonna set this back to the fish logo again. Both of the overlays use the same image texture, which is why that transferred over to the overlay one. But then I'm just gonna hit F12 on my keyboard. And then when it brings up the render window, I'm gonna go to image, save as, and save it as whatever you want. I'm gonna save mine as overlay still 002. But let's say you want the full you want the full nine yards. You want that nice gradient animation or whatever, or animation on the sci-fi one. Uh, for that, you just have to go to the printer icon right here. And you'll notice that I've already put in all of the proper codec and format options for a transparent WebM file. All you have to do is go to output and the folder icon and save this wherever you want. I'm gonna save this as overlay overlay animated two uh, hit enter twice and then you just have to go to render and render animation and it'll bring up a window and you'll notice the time bar going across here and it will render out your entire animation and i'm not gonna let this play out because that's a total waste of your time so i will see you all in obs all right, hopping over into OBS, all you have to do is grab your overlay and drag it in from Windows Explorer, or you can do it the old fashioned way. Uh, then you're going to want to right click it, go to properties, make sure loop is on. And um, I think that's all you have to do. Then hit okay, and it should loop seamlessly. Then you can adjust the size of this to be something that you like. You can also adjust the size within Blender to be something that you like from the get-go if you prefer to do it that way. Then you're gonna want to grab your face cam, which I'm using my camera right now to record this tutorial. So I have my still image, but this will act as my face cam. So you want your face cam to be over the overlay, but you'll notice that my border of my green screen face cam extends past this. So for that, all you have to do, let's say we have this a little bit bigger and you're overlapping the edges there. All you have to do is hold Alt on your keyboard and click the edge and drag it until it crops. And you're gonna wanna spend some time to make sure this matches up perfectly. But for the most part, that's all you have to do. Then you just take the two things right here under sources, right click and say, group selected items. So now, if you click the group, you can drag the entire thing around uh, very easily. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully, at this point, you have a cool new camera overlay to use with your green screen. If you have any questions or just wanna come hang out with our incredible community, I'm live every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at twitch.tv slash oraclefishlive. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below the video for new content every single week. And let me know in the comments what kinds of things you wanna see next. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream professor, and class is out. Thank you.